Hey Legionnaires and welcome back to the Napoleonic World, here we are here with another NTW3 battle view today and we have a glorious 4v4 here as we already have a bit of action going on as some Chevalier Gears here of Hess have been scared off here by what looks like a um, Austrian and Russian com combined force here. Um, a very interesting army actually this is uh, being set up, I don't know if it's like uh, Suvorov or something like that, might be Suvorov's squad, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but we do have all 1809 French cores here today. We have um, Messena here, the 10-pointer. We have all the way back there, we have Eugene, 11-pointer over there. We have, uh, uh, over over here we have, Le uh, oh, I always forget how to say his name, but uh, and someone told me in the last comments as well. But we have uh, um, Le Bavre or something like that. I don't definitely budge his name. The Bavarian core there, but there you go. And then we have all the way on the far side, all the way over there, my favorite faction of all, uh, the Poles, Poniatowski here today and he is here to lead his people to glory. Come on Poland, I believe in you. He actually seems like he brought some decent Polish infantry as well by the looks of it. Lots of squares, which is not usual uh, for Poland bringing so little cav actually as well. Uh, like I see like what, two, three units of cav? On uh, artillery as well. Yeah, he brought very minimal cav actually for a Poland build, which is very strange to see. With the Holy Roman Empire as well already here as well, so already have two armies really pressing down here on the center. That is uh, a lot of pressure he's going to have to deal with early on here. It looks like we have a also have a Britain and Portugal um, like army over here. I'm surprised that we're seeing these look like, like actual custom armies, and they're going up against cores. So I don't know how well balance is going to be because I didn't think cores and custom armies was really balanced but maybe i'm wrong um it also looks like we've got the ottoman empire way back in the back as well so yeah we have uh, i think a suvorov call we have um the holy roman empire we have britain with the anglo portuguese and then we have the ottomans here as well so it's gonna be an interesting mix of armies that is for sure i'm excited to see how this one goes down yeah i'm not sure this might not be um suvorov maybe it'll be um like the 1805 sort of like uh, hybrid, but I'm not sure. But we've got some. Uh, I can tell you for one thing, we've got Voltigeurs at the line here. They're already having a little bit of a snipe at these infantry here, patiently waiting these uh, Austrian infantry here, waiting in the wings. We have got Russians moving forward very quickly. This was sent in by a member of my Discord uh, who is a big fan of Entry with three cents in quite a few replays. So I thought, you know what, definitely worth checking this one out. He says it's a pretty fun one. And what better thing to send to have before Christmas with some glorious Napoleonic action. I'm so looking forward to it. If you guys are enjoying the entry action, and generally just see, enjoy the videos. If you remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're on here, and a comment to support. It really does help out the channel. As you can see, look at the shots coming in. I don't know whether with the patch we actually have the new Russian sounds. They sound very different. They sound awesome. That is for sure. Look at this unit already here. Down the red morale. Not breaking already. There it goes. Already breaking. First casualty for the coalition here today. That infantry unit. We've got artillery actually sitting up pretty point blank range as well as some uh, Austrian artillery being formed up. So uh, it's a uh, small unit there, like a five pound or something. French giving ground. As the, uh, as the Russians get a little bit closer there, that's certainly going to be pretty withering fire there by the looks of it. And here we go, we've got cavalry coming in as well, seeing an opportunity I think because the French are reshuffling their lines here. Ca these guys can't form a square, will they form a square? Maybe, I think they were. Here we go, cavalry charge coming in, and kind of hits the side unit here. And they have been, uh, well, stopped in their tracks. Those squares definitely did their job, so really well done there. Might break that unit as well. Uh, looks like we've got another unit here. Looks like a Cossack unit coming in. And we also have Grenadiers in column formation. They are going in. They are not going to stop. We've got three units of Pavlov's Grenadiers, and they're going to go straight on in, actually. This is a very aggressive assault. So we've got the Cossacks that are going to charge in. Tie these guys down. They actually didn't form a square. Morale is not bad. And then we've got the infantry there coming in. One unit breaking instantly there. The center taking a lot of hits here. In go the Grenadiers. Chaos straight away from this game. Wow, what a fight. This could be pretty bad because this infantry is pretty decent. But it's not going to stop these Russian Grenadiers, that is for sure. These are some tough bastards, these Grenadiers. They fight for the Tsar and only for the Tsar. They listen to no other man. Yeah, that, that unit's down to red morale. Losing slightly. He's already lost a lot of men, to be fair. If the cab can get in behind, do a lot of damage. Um, there is actually got um, Dragoons here of uh, Barden. They're setting up. They're going to try and deal with these Tsars. 
French infantry is breaking dramatically here. We've got more cavalry coming to the side of this infantry here. Doing a lot of damage. The center's court is in all sorts of problems right now. Uh, cavalry has been repulsed though here, so maybe the Dragoons of Barden can turn this around here. They are trying to deal with these Avalos Grenadiers. Either they can form the square or have chosen not to. Maybe they can't, I don't know. Uh, they're getting charged by their own cav as well, which is not going to help morale. So they need to be careful of that. Looks like one of the uh, Grenadiers has been stopped in its track. More infantry on its way up. Laguerre coming. More line infantry as well. Lots of squares were broken though for the French, which caused, could cause problems. Dragoons here look like they might break. Yep, there you go. They're broken. So that's a bit of a win there. Now the cavalry's going to carry on in into another unit here of French infantry. My god, what a dramatic start to this battle. I can't expect anything less though from these glorious battles. I've certainly been enjoying NGO through very recently. It's certainly great to be back. It certainly looks like HRE over here setting up uh, nicely. They're going to be going in. Whether they're going to send in their own cavalry, I don't know. It certainly would be good to try and get in there and, and cause some havoc now. And we've got the Bavarians over here now catching the clashing with the Anglo Portuguese, that's an easy win for them. Um, so it looks like um, they're kind of flanking almost the Brits at the moment. It looks like they're not interested at all engaging the, the Ottomans who uh, look like they're setting up their guns and they've got their stakes in position. It looks like they're kind of like set, in, set to dig in here. It looks like Bavaria is going to ignore them and just go straight into the side of Britain who could be 2v1 here by Eugene and by Bavaria. So that could definitely be a pretty good one there. The Austrian, oh not the Austrians, the uh, the Russians, well I said they're high but um, I guess. Still going in, these Russians here battling up with uh, Cadavaneers, which are an elite in the game. The Cav coming in here trying to again do damage to morale. Looks like they were broken. Looks like these charges from the um, Russians and the Austrians here are starting to slow down a bit. They're losing their momentum. It's only with the loss of those uh, Grenadiers. And the cab is certainly going to have damage the momentum there. Go on, fire! Fire, Austrians! Kill those damn Frenchies! They're actually going to retreat here, these Russians. Oh, they're going to break as well. I was about to say, they're going to survive, this, but they didn't. What have we got back here? We've got... Oh, that Baden uh, Dragoonian is back. Okay. Poland has now arrived on the battlefield. Poland is ready to go. Is Chelsea here? Very close to the front line, though. He needs to be careful for this. He lost... Uh, a decent amount where this is enough cab fight it looks like it might have been it might be a cab fight here with the HRE which looks like he might have come out on top of actually yeah a lot of cab actually wow I have missed all this what happened here is a lot of cab that's just gone in and just been absolutely wiped off the face of the earth by the looks of it by the uh, by the pole I think that is the case I don't think these um the Senate I didn't find over here, so this has got to be the Poles, I think. Yeah, they've um, beaten a lot of units here, I think, with their cavalry. So, uh, really well onto the Poles there, I, I, I guess. Didn't really see, but the Poles are, have now arrived. So they're taking on the HRE. There are Ottomans on this side, though, as well. So it seems like Ottomans almost everywhere in this game, which I don't know if it's a good idea. Uh, France also on the Senna now, and Eugene able to flank on the, uh, on the uh, Russians and the Austrians here, which is not a good sign. They're going to have to be forced back. Looks like as well Bavaria uh, not being forced back, but being forced sideways. As they're kind of, I don't know, avoiding the Brits. Uh, the Anglo Portuguese army here. I mean, the Brits oh, seem to get into a good gunfight. Oh, general under attack here. This is not good. We actually have a, a little uh, Ottoman unit here that got into the back lines and is trying to deal some damage to the uh, general here, Poniatowski, being managed to get out of there in time, which is good to see because otherwise, Poland would be in real trouble. Polish morale is uh, not great at the best of times. It's only going to be great without a, uh, without a general. But yeah, we'll see how good these uh, infantry do. I love their um, their shakos. They've got such unique hats. That's why it's one of my favourite factions. I think also it's historically. The Poles are pretty badass. There you go. Firing up a glorious volley. Fighting for their freedom here. The men of Poland. They can do it. I mean, look at the officer. He looks awesome. That is a man. Who's so got some serious grip? I like his hat. And he's got a cool mustache as well to go with it. Whether the poles can flank around here, this uh, Strelz unit is going to go really wide if they want to. It doesn't seem like the um, like the HRE have got much out there. Whether they do, I mean, they look like they had Cav defeated. It's a sizable amount. So Poland, I think, could probably flank around and maybe be able to do some serious damage. I mean, the HRE got a lot of infantry. I don't know if they can outgun. 
the HRE, but they can certainly like outflank them and try and take them out that way. Uh, and certainly setting up guns here are the uh, are the HRE, so they're just going to pound this uh, this flank here, which is not going to go too well. We've got some guns setting up for the poles as well. We're going to just do the same thing down the uh, the HRE centre by the looks of it. Uh, what's this unit? Is Cyprian? Oh, they didn't bring any like uh, grenadiers, which I thought maybe they might, but they chose not to. It seems. Eugene now is uh, Eugene and Messina, I think, are now fully engaged with the Anglo-Portuguese army over here as well. They're getting involved. It's actually the Portuguese contingent here that is getting into the fray. What a glorious fight! The Brits here, patiently waiting, as you should. The Ottomans now coming up though. Oh, we've got an Ottoman cab fight over here as well. Okay. So, I mean, the Ottoman cab is going to be much superior to anything that the Bavarians, uh, I think, can probably bring up. But it looks like it's going to break. The Ottoman cab is kind of one of their strongest things. So, as we see in the fights, they often bring a lot of it and it's pretty decent. And they're trying to get in here amongst a bunch of light infantry, breaking some light infantry down here by the looks of it. Uh, Dragoons here holding for now, but whether that will last. More cab getting in here now. Yep. I mean, Bavarian's routing as well is not going to help, but a lot of Ottoman units on low morale. They look like they're breaking there. But yeah, big, big fight out here on the front here between Bavaria and the Ottomans. Two factions that you'd never think you'd see against each other. That man just died, but he's standing on his horse. I'm not sure, quite sure how you managed that, sir, but well done. I guess, you know, I mean, it's famous, you know, that some guys could, like, stand on their horses while riding around. Don't know whether that really true or not for the Ottoman army, but there you go. The Ottomans actually getting out of the hit. It's got free with that cap unit. But it looks like uh, they might be charged here by Gustav uh, Wittgenstein going in with his cap. So they're going to do a, a sizable amount of damage to that unit. Yeah, down to Red Morale. Keep chasing it, boys. This is a healthy cap unit you can drown. Uh, whether the Ottomans have got more, it doesn't look like it. It looks like they've got a bunch of infantry, which I'm surprised by. I thought maybe they'd bring a, uh, a sizable cav army and try and out cav the French. Certainly might have been pretty useful against the Poles, but um, they were fooled. The Poles didn't bring much cav. So uh, they would have been wrong to play that game, I guess. The guns over here for Austria setting up. Fire when ready. Hit those damn Poles. And the Austrians are one of those that uh, I want to deny the Poles their freedom. They, you know, they own like uh, Galicia and places like that. Poles also had wanted or had claim to. You got uh, some cavalry there getting hit. Like I said, this cav should just really flank around. I mean, if this is all that the HRE has with cav to defend the flank, this is a joke of a cav unit to try and stop. Well, that's a uh, 71 cavalry unit, uh, cavalryman there. It's a joke of an attempt to stop them. This uh, like hybrid core here though, in a real bad shape. If I was in the center, I'd just be putting all my efforts to try and break through here now. This is a small army. I mean, they got a big gun uh, battery set up here as well. Six pounders. Get that right in the gap here. It would just pound away. You can do a lot of damage. Got some chasseurs, uh, peed here, like um, Barden. So whether these are elite units, I don't know. So they're just like, so I know like there are some like uh, French chasseur like peed. It's very very good. I don't know where the Barden ones are. They got more like fusiliers of the guard of Hess back here. So are relatively good. They are pretty good uh, units, to be fair. So they're being shifted over by Masena. Looks like that left flank. Seems like he's going to put up some sort of defense against the HR as well. Oh, we got another melee fight down here, actually. Oh, the uh, Pavlos Grenadiers going in again. He's got Grenadiers. He's going to want to give up. There you go. Now is the time to give up. Second attempt. Volley's coming in, doing some serious damage. He's six pounders as well, putting some rounds, it seems like. I think it's into the uh, British lines, it looks like they're going into. Some good shots going off there. Uh, and we have, oh my gosh, I've not been looking over here. Bavaria has gone in hard against the Brits and has broken a lot of them, actually. Wow. This is a lot of cab and also infantry going in, breaking through. And they're actually retreating, they're just giving ground. Uh, maybe because they see the British cab was shifting up. But yeah, that's a bold move. And an Allied General's died. Um, okay, so we have um, a little Turkish unit getting in behind, and I think it's taking out Eugene's general here. That is a big, big loss. 
for uh, the French. I don't know whether that's how badly that's going to affect them. Eugene's relatively decent call. His Italian troops are pretty solid. Um, he actually hasn't brought that many. I'm uh, but yeah, he brought actually a lot of like German troops and stuff back here. Actual French troops. Oh, he's got the um, the guard as well back here. He's got, uh, I think, he's got Voltigares. Oh no, these are Voltigare Convenes. So they're not guard actually. Um, no, he didn't bring any guards like of the uh, Italian ones. So that is surprising. Unless they're in the front lines, but it doesn't seem like they are. So yeah, he didn't. Wow. Maybe this army will struggle without a general then, but the guards usually are, you know, pretty sturdy with or without generals. Here we go, the little Turkish unit coming in here, getting stopped instantly by the Bavarians. And there you go, easy win there for the Bavarians, who were about to send up more infantry than change their mind. Ottomans actually doing a pretty good job holding that, this line. The Brits also about to send forward some cab. I mean, like, this is some pretty decent cab. It's like Portuguese, uh, like Dragoo, uh, not Dragoon, so SARS or like, uh, like Dragoon, something like that. Coming up. Mercena now pushing forward as well, as are the Poles. Ah, oh, boys, there you go, good boy. But yeah, if you want to make sure you don't miss any NGW3 battles or streams, feel free to hit that notification bell. Make sure that you do if you yeah, don't want to miss out on any streams. If you do them regularly, at least try and do them once a week. Um, I'm trying to like start a new series of Napoleonic Nights, so we have a bit of like a Napoleonic theme with another game, then move on to NGW3. Um, and yeah, seemed like a real good success last time, so we're going to try again. Uh, certainly in a few weeks around Christmas to see how it goes. See here, this uh, side unit actually routing. Look at the French units so there, both the gears, they tried to stop it. We have got a square here forming up. They're going to try and now be a bit more of a uh, solid defense, it looks like. Oh, this is, um, these look like grenadiers actually from Barden. So, it's like, uh, these are Mercedes actually, sorry. Yeah, Mercedes got some uh, grenadiers over here. You can maybe use the uh, to break through these lines. Eugene over here with some Italian infantry and some uh, some Frenchies as well setting up. But his morale did take a bit of a dip there for a second. The French artillery as well pounding away. The Bavarians over here as well. They're chipping away. They did a pretty good job. I mean, this is pretty intense for Bavaria and the Turks. Both sides kind of like trading units at the moment. The horse artillery setting up here for the Ottomans. A lot of troops as well. They still look too elite, but it's hard to really tell with the Ottomans. Firing into the, uh, into the Bavarian camp. They need to make sure they're not got units like this overlapping, otherwise they shoot the back of their own men. They need to be very careful. You don't do that. It causes a whole lot of morale problems. Here we go. Brendan also looks like he's uh, pushing up a little bit after a... A little bit of a setback when he lost a lot of troops to that Bavarian charge. Both sides, I feel like, have had setbacks in this one. It's been a pretty evenly matched one, that's for sure. Neither side really backing down like too much, though. Both are quite willing to stay in the fight. The center here with some pretty brutal volleys against the HRE. Oh, that's a nice volley. Pretty well protected by this um, tree line. Uh, and the center can do with getting himself actually into it to try and again probably protect his own men. Poles as well here. Again, we could probably do with trying to get in amongst the tree line because the HRE will benefit from this. And like I keep saying, they need to keep flanking around. This unit here just needs to keep realizing there's nothing out there. Nothing out there that the uh, HRE can really do or stop. And then they could get in behind and they could maybe go for some, uh, some charges on generals. I mean, it's a general back here, HRE general. Kill him. I'll do a whole lot of problems for the, uh, for the HRE morale. They're bringing up their artillery right as we speak, it seems. So they look like they're getting ready to dig in somewhere. We have artillery as well here as well for the uh, for the like, for the Russians and the uh, and the Austrians. So actually, that horse artillery is going to unlimber and move back, or limber up and move back. We've got a general over here. What is he doing off his horse? This is a bad idea. That's definitely a good target to try and take out. That general dismounted there on his own. Definitely will take him out. We've got a grand Bre British battery of stuff here as well. This is pounding where the Bavarians and the uh, Yushin Corps. 
Putting some good old. Well, actually, I see it coming away at the lines. I think it's trying to go for the artillery. The Italian infantry here struggling away. Oh, jeez. Round. I mean, look at the holes that are being put into this unit. Not good. Looks like maybe we're about to see a Hussar unit here that I think they're going to make a push, I think, for these guns. There are two gun units there. I think that is going to be their objective. Oh, we have a some little Cossack unit or something back here. I'm not sure what this was that's gone back here. It's gone routed, but something for the uh, for the coalition got routed there. We also have a little Turkish unit that's uh, appeared out of nowhere. That's going to go for this big artillery battery there. That's a six-pounder, four six-pounders, and I think it's going to get them. The, uh, the French and no one else is paying really attention to that. So that's going to be a big win there. Uh, Bavarians looks like they went for a charge and failed against the, the British. Still no real charge from those Hussars who said are retreating. Go in, Turks. <laughs> go in and you kill these guys. There we go. I think they're going to go. There they go. And they're chopping away at these guys. That's an easy win for them. And that's one big gun battery that's taken out. I don't know if the general's nearby uh, for Messena. Uh, what have they got here? Dragoon of Bar. They could do with taking that out. And they could just hammer an anvil a lot of units here or go for a general. Like Messena is in a uh, whole bad spot there. But it looks like they're going to go for this, uh, this Dragoon unit. I mean, I don't know how well they're really going to do. This Dragoon is routed, I think, once at least. So they might, they might win it. You never know. We have actually got a, we have actually got the center here. He's going to charge into battle and try and win this battle for his uh, for his cab. Looks like uh, the Ottomans though have routed just in the nick of time. We've got Cossacks going in here, failing to break through this French line, and now we have uh, another cavalry charge here. We do have those. We have a Dragoon going in here. They're going to try and take out the guns. It was only going to successfully do it. We do have Portuguese cabs setting up now, trying to slow them down. And in the end, everything broke, both cab and artillery. This looks like we're going to be cab. And they look like they were going to retaliate and go for the guns. Oh, they are. They're going to retaliate and take out these uh, eight pounders. There you go. That should be an easy victory as well for the, uh, for the British. They're like, if you take out our guns, we'll take out yours. That's how it works. And the French are actually going in for a charge here with infantry. They have broken in a, in a uh, British unit. But morale for themselves won't be that great with a cavalry unit coming into their flank. Ottomans are being blown apart here as the uh, Bavarians go into melee, it seems. So, yeah, that is not a good sign either. The Ottomans in real, real trouble there. After so holding for on for a pretty good amount of time. A general's been killed off. That is going to be the Ottoman general falling. Yep, it is. Um, looks like Eugene's dragoons of Italy have done the job. So, well done to them. And now the uh, the Ottoman general is going to charge on in a what remains of his uh, general unit. And that is probably going to be the end of the Ottomans. I can't imagine their morale is going to hold for much longer uh, with that sort of stuff going on. Hold the line, boys. Hold the line. The Frenchies over there setting up. And it looks like they're breaking through as well. I mean, it looks like um, this a hybrid army over here is starting to struggle. We have got a, a Dragoon of Barden over here. He's starting to do their damage breaking through as well. And uh, whether they can wrap around, I don't know. We've got a, a little unit here in the center. We've got Francois Joseph. He's uh, flanking here with his 84 men on the HRE, forcing them back. The poles on this side, they've been steadily chipping away, it seems. Um, they have been flanking around as well. They need to get their cav, like I said, still need to get that in behind. Maybe challenge the HRE cav. They can just go for the death blow on the HRE. They could just mop them up quite nicely, to be honest. And uh, there wouldn't be much left to the coalition at that point. As you can see, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of turning into a couple of, uh, like, crazy formations. Got one here, another one over there, and then sort of one over on that far right-hand side as well. But yeah, the uh, poles right now, they're doing their best. They're holding the line. Oh, 
Give him a ball. There you go, glorious. For Poland. Both sides, I think, just using an artillery to shoot at each other. I'm not really, really sure what they're firing at. Oh no, they're definitely firing at infantry. I think the Poles are firing at the uh, the Austria or the HRE artillery. I'm not really sure. But, I mean, yeah, now, right now, the center just needs to go full tilt through this gap that he's formed here. I mean, you can see on this side as well, oh, yeah, Britain is starting to master out as well, actually getting surrounded. Here's Masena, Eugene, and the Bavarian Corps all kind of just surround them. And that is going to be the end of Britain, I think. He's got, like, a couple of units here that are holding on, but, yeah, nothing sizable. Uh, Bavaria over here being forced back by the Ottomans right now, but I think this is only temporary as he threw most of his army over, like, to help against the Brits. We now have some of Eugene's ar army now moving this way. Italian infantry. Uh, four units of the Italian infantry. They're going over in that direction to support the Bavarians. We have a bayonet charge by some grenadiers of HRE. Looks so like they've been easily dealt with. Another unit of the grenadiers. This looks like a more tough one. They've been routed as well, though. Oh, the Poles have won their fight on this flank here, as they should have. This was a tiny little cab unit left. And now these Poles need to just get in behind. Go for the general if they can, or for the artillery. They just need to get in there, do some damage now. Um, they can really, really just end this, uh, this battle, like, very soon if they just kill off the HRE. It's not going to take much. Oh, I don't know if these guys fall up in time. I don't know, morale. Say otherwise, but... I don't know, I feel like the Poles might just break through anyway. The HRE morale not looking great yet. Form square didn't matter, it seems. It's now going to charge in, I think, try and break another one. Uh, the Polish infantry also pushing up. Maybe going to go for a melee charge. I think melee, the Poles are relatively decent in as well. There you go, the cab broke there. Now we're going to see the infantry go in. Hold the line, boys! But yeah, the Poles are just advancing up right now. We've got the uh, Strelzi moving in here. They're going for the guns. The General in here as well. This is bold from the uh, HRE General actually going in combat. I don't know if that's a wise idea. There is still 57 of these cavalry units here. The General, though, is yeah, getting swamped slowly. And there you go. I think he's been routed. The gun's been gone. Another image unit's gone, and yeah, all of a sudden the HRE's right flank is looking non-existent almost, with the lack of a general also really contributing to that fight there. The Ottomans over on this side here, still holding on for now, but yeah, it's not going to be long till they also bite the dust, it seems. It seems as though, uh, to be honest, the coalition, they, when they started losing, they should have just started retreating a bit more. But I can also see why they're feeling hard done by. They killed a couple of generals off. Morale really should have started to dip. Didn't really seem to do just that. But hey, that's how we, that's sometimes how NG3 goes. Especially if you're playing against the French. The French always seem to have a bit more the, uh, uh, the important forces always seem to have a little bit more in the tank when it comes to morale. Especially when you're playing like against HRE. Who have got no tank in the morale when it comes to morale. But yeah, cavalry going in here. It looks like they're going to route the remains of these infantry. They can't form square. Well, maybe they can, but it doesn't really matter. Because this one here is on red morale. Oh, they're forming square. Running. Yep, there you go. Broken. Didn't really matter at all. We have got a HRE unit in here. Don't know what it is. Maybe a general. Looks like it might be a general, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, and then really just the British have returned a little bit. The uh, the Ottomans have been routed fully again by the Bavarian line infantry on the side. We've had an absolute game and a half, that is for sure. Really well done there to Bavaria. So we're just going to fast forward a little bit now as we wait for the uh, the mop-up really to, to take place. Um, but yeah, it's certainly been a really, really fun battle. I really enjoyed it. A very fast-paced one, that is for sure. Um, over in almost a flash, really. The French, at points, I felt like, were in a little bit of trouble. Certainly at the beginning, the center took a lot of casualties, but he managed to sustain the losses and get up reserves and, and come and save the day, really. 
Um, it looks like we've got a the HRE general. He's actually being a uh, oh no, it's not a general either. It's the artillery crew just charging out and going for the uh, going for the kill. But it looks like uh, the British are going to be the last to stand. And there you go. Uh, I think their final two units they're dying. Oh no, the Ottomans have rallied as well. So uh, Britain is not going to be the last. It seems that's uh, even sadder. Not going to be able to want to claim victory, being the last coalition man standing. Um, but yeah, there you go. It does seem as though maybe the replay is paused, actually, maybe. Okay, so yeah, the replay did pause, unfortunately. Hopefully, I put up the end results. Uh, so thank you very much to Ordo, who sent this one in. Very pretty much appreciated. Um, I uh, really enjoyed the battle. Uh, it was a really, really fun one, that is for sure. Um, yeah, there wasn't really much left. I just kind of quickly looked to see if you really missed anything. It was just really a clear cleanup of units that just re-rallied. Um, but yeah, the battle was really just was already decided. Um, but yeah, well done to all of the uh, like all of the coalition players and all of the imperial players. Did a very, very good job. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy your Christmas. And there should be maybe like one more video out before Christmas. Um, if you're watching this around Christmas time, if you're not, if you're watching it in the middle of summer, well. There'll be plenty more videos to come as the year goes by. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show support. And I'll see you guys in the next one.